So welcome to the launch of the Content Marketing Studio Show here on Blab. I am Pascal Fintoni, and with my co-host, Leon Howe, we're here to do two things for you. First, we're going to put the spotlight on sales and marketing practitioners. And secondly, we're going to kind of help you wrap up your busy week with a fun and insightful conversation. But this is your show to help you create better online content faster. So let me begin by welcoming Leon to the show. Thank you, Pascal. Every week, we're going to invite experts who are going to share their experiences and expertise with us uh, and answering questions from ourselves and from you, the audience. And today, we'd like to welcome Norma Foster. Hello, Norma. Hi. Good to see you. Thank you for inviting me. No problem at all. Um, just a little bit of background about Norma. Norma's an expert in combining both people and business development. And she helps business owners in uh, helping communicate their message across the world with clarity, confidence to achieve their goals. And today, Norma will be helping us explore and share on how we can become more confident and have more self-belief as content creators. So it's all exciting stuff today. Um, so I'll hand you back to Pascal. Yeah, so before we begin the interview, Norma, now that the formal introductions are, are over, I would like to explain to us and to the audience and the viewers, listeners, that there, are, there is a structure. We have four key segments. Segment number one, Norma, is called problem, which is where we're going to ask you to explain what it is that we are facing as, as a challenge and why it may be happening in terms of this self-doubt and worry as content creator. Segment number two, we're looking at the process to remedy and solve this problem and, and, the, and remove this obstacle. Segment number three, be looking at your recommendation in terms of apps, online resources and, and, and books perhaps that we can read to help us implement your recommendations. And then the fourth segment, we reach really open up the debate and the questions to the audience with the, uh, with the Q&A. So that's kind of the structure that we're gonna have. And so let's begin with segment one. And I'm gonna ask Leon to ask you the very first question of this session. Yeah, excellent. Thanks very much, Pascal. So let's begin, Norma. So the first question is, why do you think people get so anxious in developing content for their business? Do you know, Leon, it's so interesting. And I work with so many businesses on a whole range of different problems. And typically, when you get down to it, the one thing that everybody struggles with is lack of confidence and worries and those little internal gremlins that are always niggling away you know we have 70,000 thoughts per day 90 percent of them are the same with thought, thoughts that we had yesterday and the day before and a whopping 70 percent of those thoughts are all negative and that's a consistent pattern that we get into what actually happens inside your body when you're thinking these negative thoughts is that your brain cells are firing and wiring together. And every time you have that negative thought, that negative pattern becomes more and more and more entrenched. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what happens when you're thinking is that you have a thought, that thought creates a chemical in your body, which then gets you to act in a certain way and because you're acting in a certain way, that creates a feeling. And that feeling makes a demand on your brain for more thoughts and more chemicals. Mm. So we get into a sort of thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking that's entrenching those patterns in your brain. And that repetition just gets you hankering for more and more and more. We become addicted to the habit of being ourselves, essentially. Right, very interesting. So in terms of your experience, Norma, um, would you say every business owner kind of encounters these feelings and um, distractions, let's say, yeah? I, I would. It's, it's, it's honestly, it's everybody. And I think everyone suffers from that lack of confidence. And you know what it's like if you're having to get up and give a presentation and you might have felt very nervous the last time and maybe it didn't go quite so well. The yeah. first thing you're going to do when you get up to do your keynote speech or give your presentation or present your webinar is you're going to be thinking, I hope that 
the thing that happened the last time doesn't happen again. Yeah. And you're going to be dwelling on that negative thought and that negative experience. And that starts to get you in that vein of, of negativity. And sure enough, what will happen is that you're going to have that same negative experience again. But it, it's such a common thing. We tend to dwell on the negatives more than we dwell on the positives. Yeah, that's interesting, that, Norma. So, so do you think it's kind of natural for all of us to have, have them feelings, as you were saying before? Do you think it's just natural that we always think kind of negative rather than positive? It, it's a habit we can get into, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I think I think we all do that. Um, I don't know whether there's a difference in terms of maybe women and, and men and whether there are any differences there in terms of, you know, we tend to go over things over and over and over again in our minds and look at all of the different alternatives, et cetera. But men, to be quite honest, are just as prone. And I think that confidence issue is something that very often they struggle with but maybe don't always talk about they're not open about it they're not sharing their thoughts and looking for ways to 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 help them yeah so um what you're saying the norma if we have kind of self you know lack in self-confidence and self-belief that's going to have an impact on us in in content creators and providing key messages and sharing content with others would you say well, uh, you know, I, I think it does because, you know, 70% of the time during our day, we're, we're really in survival mode. Yeah. You know, we're fighting time, we're stressed out, uh, we're thinking about all of the things that might go wrong, yeah. we're really busy. And, you know, when we get into those stress emotions, actually what's happening is that we're just using the 5% of our brain at the very front of our minds, that's kind of like mission control. Yeah. Uh, you know, in that stress mode, you, you've got the, the flight or fight panic coming up and your system shut down and you're just focused on survival. Yeah. And what happens is that just stifles all of your creativity. You're living in the front 5% of your brain. Yeah. The 95% of your brain that's more in tune with with your subconscious. It's all about feeling, which is where your creativity is. Yeah, doesn't get a word in. Yeah. So yes, I, you know, I, I think it is um, a really difficult place to be, and it definitely, definitely stifles your creativity. Yeah. So, uh, what you're saying is obviously, if if you haven't got that self belief, you haven't got that confidence you're not going to use the, the creativity there, you're not going to use the creative part to create good content. Is that right, uh, Norma? Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, you know what it's like when you've had a, a, a great day, you're feeling relaxed, you're not stressed, you're yeah. in the zone, and, you know, you're opening up your mind and bang, those ideas start coming, you're in the groove, the content flows. Um, you know, it's a bit like, when I remember once I was at the Leeds Festival and we'd run out of money and I had to queue up at this one cash automat to get money out of the cash automat. It was the only one there and otherwise we weren't going to eat or drink for the whole of the day. And I get to the machine after nearly one hour and 10 minutes and I can't remember my PIN number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you get yeah. stressed out. Yeah. No matter what you do, you can't remember it. I had to walk runs around the block, switch off my thinking brain and just let my body do it. Walk up to it and just go bang, bang, bang without thinking. And it's that sort of it's that sort of subconscious creative mode that you really need to tap into when when you're thinking about creating content. Right. But you can't do that if you're constantly in stress using that front part of your brain and, and, and trying to direct it in, in that survival mode. Yeah. It just doesn't work. Yeah, excellent. So uh, in terms of you've got a lot of experience, Norma, I know that in, in dealing with local businesses and, and business that trade internationally as well. So is this something that you help businesses with to kind of overcome when creating content? It is. It yeah. is. And as you can as you can imagine, you know, it's it's a hard job creating content for your UK audience up here in the Northeast. Yeah. 
when you throw into the mix the fact that you're looking at international clients who speak different languages, have different cultural preferences and different behaviours on the web, etc. Yeah. It just becomes so much more difficult and the fear factor gets so much bigger as well. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, so would you say a first step for us all as, as business managers, whether we're local or, or international, is exactly what you're saying, is, is we need to, to find that inner confidence, to find that self-belief and, and kind of, um, switch off from all of the noise out there with daily things that we do. Is that what you're seeing normally? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, do you know it kind of is? But if you're like me, I've bought more self help books than I've had hot dinners. Yeah. And, you know, half of them I probably haven't read. Yeah. And you make lists and you stick notes on your desk about what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. Yeah. And actually, that in itself can create more stress, more. Yeah your head more things to think about more things to do we're, we're, it's, it's like we're almost overwhelmed by you know quick fix influence techniques power strategies communication yeah. skills and all of the things that we need to do so i think when people get in that stress mode and actually just as part of our day-to-day -day life yeah we're constantly looking to the external environment for the solution to our problems and for something that we can do that will change this and, and make it better, make it easier, make it more enjoyable, make it more creative, more fun. Yeah. And actually, that just creates more pressure and more stress upon ourselves. So we end up getting into this vicious circle. Yeah. And that it's not the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So what we going to be looking with hopefully uh with yourself norma is how you can provide some solutions to this yeah so just to kind of quickly recap um it's it's common as you say as us as business owners as a marketeers to have that um lack of confidence that lack of self-belief perhaps and to be in a rut kind of thing so so what you're saying is hopefully you're going to be providing us some with some tools to um kind of find some space and look at how we can create content better is that correct yeah yeah exactly Excellent. i mean we we need to break the habit of being ourselves yeah. and actually what i'm going to encourage everyone to do today is to actually overcome yourself break the habit of being yourself and create the very best version of yourself that you can be and that takes some thought and some working out um, and just create new habits because, you know, change and creating new habits isn't about willpower. Yeah. You know, 50 percent of us want to achieve our goals and we don't. More than 50 percent of us want to lose weight and we can't, yeah. you know, and, and that willpower is actually not where it's at. What we need to be doing is becoming aware of the old habits, saying, thank you very much. I understand how I do me, how I'm in these habits and patterns of behavior, and just be grateful for those as insights and wisdom, put them to one side, and then actually model the person that you want to be in the future and create new habits, new brain connections, and new ways of actually being able to do that and that entails going inside rather than looking for the answer externally excellent excellent well thank you very much uh, norma i think that's uh, kind of give us all an idea on the on the problems we face as content creators um what i'm going to do now is hand over to pascal pascal would you like to yeah absolutely so i mean listening to norma you know i have to say i'm, I'm I realized why it was so important to launch the show with those getting ready for content marketing, because this is a situation, Norma, I'm pushing my clients to create more content yeah. and to do it better and faster to obviously um, face the competition out there. And yet you're telling me that we are operating in an environment which is actually more stressful than, than ever before. So, so we, we have a conflict here, you know, which I think is important to, to, to reflect because we kind of have um, both. You kind of have someone being pushed to be more uh, um, effective in their content creation if the environment around them is not conducive for that. And if they can't change the environment, am I detecting from you what you're saying, Norma, that we have to change ourselves and, and the way we perceive things? 
Yeah, and actually, it you know, it's it's very much the easier way of doing it because you're in complete control of yourself. You're in complete control of what you think about. And actually, you know, if you think and believe something, you're right. That's where you're going to be living. That's what you're going to get. And I was reading um, one of Gary Vaynerchuk's blogs this morning, actually, and he's written a letter to his dad, which is really sweet. I really enjoyed it. And he says, hey, dad, you know, it's funny. I was just sitting and talking to my team about content. And I said that I didn't want to do a particular article because I didn't feel it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this aspect of feeling is so important. A, it gets you into your subconscious. It means that you're going to be delivering really, really great content with confidence. But actually, that's also the content that your audience will love because you're speaking from the heart. Mm -hmm. speaking, you know, with, with, with honesty and telling your story about what makes you tick and how you do what you do. So let's say that, you know, um, let me give you a couple of scenarios which will may help you when I invite you to explain the steps we could go through. But I've got clients who have um, been very worried about pressing the published buttons on their blog. So they've had articles that no one has seen yet. Um, people are very nervous and worried about going uh, on uh, online with, via video, whether it's recorded or live as this session here. I've got people who are just very, very nervous and worried about the, the, the thoughts around, well, what will others think of me? You know, there's all sorts of things going on and getting in the way of somebody actually developing their business through, through content marketing. So with um, those individuals in mind, and there's plenty more examples I can think of, what could be the steps that we could go through to, to change? Um, okay, so I've got three tools for you today in terms of, of how you can start tackling this and, and making those changes. And they're really very, very easy steps um, for you to take. First of all, I would suggest you just pick one thing that you want to improve and get better at. Um, for me, I had an experience about 10 years ago where I gave a presentation and it was an awful experience. And it kind of haunted me after that. And I was just really nervous about making presentations. So, you know, if you focused on that and you take the one thing, the minute I was asked to give a presentation, I'd be panicking and what if it goes wrong and how am I going to do it? How am I going to create this content for my webinar or whatever it was? So get clear in your mind is the first step about how you do what you do. Almost step back from your thoughts and listen really carefully to the stories that you are telling yourself and just get that clarity. It's almost like you're stepping back out of your own shoes and watching your patterns of behavior and how you do what you do. So it's really important to just become the observer and notice more um, what, what's happening inside your head. The second step then is to think about how you can change that. And, you know, it, it's really important that you do, that you start changing that inner self-talk. So every time you notice yourself coming up with one of those little gremlins, one of those negative things, I can't do this, I'm not good at that, what if people laugh at me? You know, uh, what if I make a fool of myself? I'm gonna miss the deadlines. You know, all of these things that we come up with change the language the language is so critical to your own inner self-talk and even if you don't believe it initially just say it okay so let, let's let's try that then let's let me give you the example of my clients who've got 10 draft blog posts and they are worried about pressing the the um, published button okay. and i think it's because they're worried about yeah, people will laugh at me because my English is not good enough and that, that type of worries. So how would you change that? How would you flip it then? The story that you start saying to yourself is simply, I'm going to press this button because this is a great piece of content. People are going to really love what I'm doing. And you keep 
saying that you change your own internal dialogue, you change your language and you put it out there and you get the feedback and you work harder to make changes, to learn, etc. But you always stay in that positive vein. And there's a couple of tools I've got to help you do that. Mm -hmm. The one technique is when you catch yourself saying, I'm going to press this button and everybody's going to laugh at me. You just say change and you change the story that you're telling yourself. I'm going to press this button and people are going to send me messages about how much they enjoyed reading my blog post. And they will. And that's the fact. They will as well. And they will. Mm -hmm. They will. Because the stories that we tell ourselves are going to be, you know, a thousand times worse than anything that we could possibly come up with that's just the way people are and it sounds like such a simple technique but actually it makes a huge huge amount of difference so the change tool is really good and change is about how can i reframe this story to myself this statement that i'm making inside my own head because just saying that positive sentence over and over again starts to create the chemicals in your bloodstream that are put out by your brain that make you feel more confident that make you feel happier so you're breaking the habit of the negative thinking and actually through replacing it with a positive thought you're actually creating new connections in your brain and those positive thoughts strengthen and the chemicals that your brain's putting out into your bloodstream also become positive and they become stronger as well excellent so number one know yourself and yep. and and understand you know how you function number two change the language Excellent. which for some people was still you know i know that from mechanical school that's awfully bombastic or that's awfully um but i, I think that's you know the reality is i think um, i went on a course many years ago and someone said you know people want you to succeed that's the norm, you know, and I think some of the voices we have in our heads are, are reading this wrong. So what's the third step then, Norma? The third step is then become really clear about your future self and what you want to be like, how you want to be, how you want to be acting, um, how you want to be behaving, how you want to look, how you want your content to be, what sort of impact you want that to have on your audience. And then focus on that and it's almost like you're not just becoming clear about it and thinking positively you're actually thinking about it in a way as if it's already happened yeah as if you're already there now and you don't just think about it you actually feel it you close your eyes you've got the glass of champagne in your hand you're being toasted by your friends for the first fantastic result on your blog or whatever, you can taste the champagne, you can taste the breeze in your hair, you can hear the laughter and you can feel people patting on your back. You actually have to feel it. It's no good thinking positively, that doesn't work. You actually put yourself in the situation where you're feeling it. That's what makes all of the difference because then that's going into your subconscious mind. Right, I'm I'm sold. I don't know about you, Leon, but you know, yeah, yeah, I, I believe in this now. <laughs> I, I'm still sitting there with the champagne in the wind thrown over me. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I don't want to get too technical about this. Some of you've probably read things like The Secret and whatever else. There's loads of books out there, and one of the guys that I've done loads and loads of work and training with, uh, called Dr. Joe Dispenza, has a whole program of. Um, breaking the habit of being yourself and this this intention setting this positive intention setting tapping into thinking and feeling and acting differently that gives you positive feelings um, is actually something that is incredibly powerful and if you're setting a vision of your future self and believing it and feeling it as if it's already happening what you're actually doing is tapping into the law of quantum physics and that reality in the future is what you will get. So, you know, you're tapping into all of this good intention setting as well as boosting your confidence and making yourself feel amazing.
Okay. Oh, thanks very much. Um, I mean, I know that Leon, there was a, the third segment, something you're very keen on because yeah. you like you, you like to take action. So do you want to do you want to kick this off? Yeah. So Norma, um, have you um, any kind of applications, any tools that could help us to to kind of um, learn about this, to act yeah. upon this? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I'd like to suggest to you is that you start off with, um, you know, giving yourself some brain space because mm -hmm. those 70,000 thoughts a day are really, you know, mind-boggling, mind chatter that's going on, 70% mm -hmm. of which is negative. And one of the things that you can calm down if you're stressed or if you're worried or if you're just preparing to sit down and write creatively or you know give a presentation or go on a webinar or whatever is to actually calm your mind down and i've got a picture here that i'd like to show you hopefully everybody will be able to see it um and this this is a picture and actually it's it's um i've got one of my brain as well because i've had my brain measured and it shows you what simple breathing and meditation techniques can do to actually calm the whole mind and the system down. One of the tools I want to suggest that people use is actually a simple breathing and meditation technique that you can mm -hmm. do for sort of 10 minutes a day. Now, can can you see this? Yeah. 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 That's very clear. Yeah. Thank you. It, it's a picture of the brain. Yeah. And on this side here, okay, all that red scribble yeah. is all of the thought patterns in your brain before meditation and the picture over here is all of the change you can see that brain quieting down after a very short period of meditation wow. and i had a similar thing done on my own brain when i was at one of these workshops and after three days the significance was phenomenal so to come back to your question there's a really fab app by a company called Headspace. Right. And they've got a free trial that um, gives you a, a you know, a, an opportunity for, I think it's 10 days to try it out. And all they're asking you to do is between five and 10 minutes breathing and meditation a day. And they right. talk you through it. It's a really neat app. Okay. And hopefully, after those first 10 days, you'll start to feel a real difference, right? A real difference, whether right. you do it in the morning or the evening, doesn't yeah, really matter. Yeah, if you use it at lunchtime or whatever, but that starts to help you just get into yourself and start thinking about the things you want to change about yourself, the habits you want to change, but actually it gets your, your brain and your system aligned and into a much more positive mode. Excellent, excellent. I'm just thinking, you know, if we were to do a, a scan of Leon's head, it'd probably wow. just be blank, blank <laughs> uh, drawings, you know? That would be a difference. Leon, you're no. not going to put up with that, you, are you? You don't know how much redness is going on in my brain now there, Pascal. It's burgundy, in fact, so there. No, that's good. So, so are, are you saying um, is Headspace kind of like um, meditation, uh, Norma? Is that what it is? Or is it a mixture of all it, sorts? It, you can call it meditation or mindfulness or whatever. Yeah. Um, the guy who started Headspace off, he lived as a Buddhist monk for years. Right. And then he's come out, set up this great company, got this fabulous app that's been out there for some years now. Right. He just wants to share the good stuff with people. And, you know, you don't need to, uh, to, to be sat there for, for hours a day honestly 10 minutes a day will make yeah. a huge difference yeah so what you're saying is uh one of the first solutions is is kind of just kind of clearing your mind of all the the rubbish that's going on all the day-to-day -day, um kind of hassles and things like that yeah it's just to, yeah. to relax and um find a nice yeah. space yeah because you know when when you've got a problem like yeah. i want to create my a new blog and i'm rubbish at writing i don't know what to do yeah it's going to be awful yeah um what your brain does is it kind of looks at everything you've experienced in the past and it uses all of that knowledge to make a decision about how you're going to behave in the future yeah so every decision you make yeah is actually just going to map your past to your future 
Yeah. So what you had and what you've experienced is what you're going to get. Yeah. yeah. What the meditation does, it helps you to look at how you normally behave and say, thank you very much. I'm aware of how I do me yeah. and how all this mind chatter is not serving me well. I'm going to model who I want to be in the future. And I'm going to use this breathing and meditation technique to just calm my system down and bring me in a good space. Yeah. where I can then be clear about who I want to be in the future and where I can be clear that I'm going to start this habit of positive self-talk and changing the things that I say to myself and the things that I do. Yeah. And it really works. Excellent. It sounds ridiculously easy, but it really works. And it's so easy. I'm sure all of us will have 10 minutes of the day yeah. um, to just give it a try. Excellent, excellent. So we've got uh, Headspace as a uh, one suggestion, uh, Norma. Have you got any yeah. other tools or any other um, help? Yeah. Headspace is one. Yeah. Um, if people feel that they would like to um, get into a little bit more detail yeah. about this whole sort of breaking the habit of being yourself, yeah. then you've got this book here yeah. by Dr. Joe Dispenza. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. It's a great book. Yeah. It explains some of the science. It's got lots of stories in there. And there's kind of a 30-day program in there where you can start going into it a bit deeper yeah. if you really like the Joe Dispenza thing. Yeah. But, you know, that's all about um, creating new habits and just becoming the best version of yourself that you possibly can. And... I must say, after doing that for a month and having been on one of the workshops, I could care less about what was happening externally. I just help, felt happy from the inside out. Right. It was just a complete switch around. And once you felt that, you don't want to go back. Did, did you feel in terms of, um, so obviously you were saying you do a lot of presentations, you, um, you'd even create your own content for, for your own business, uh, Norma. Does it help stimulate the creativity, would you say, because you've got that headspace? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because, you know, what happens with all of this stuff going yeah. on, right, 5% of your brain's in total control because yeah. you're in stress and survival. Yeah. When you calm that down, the 95% of your brain and your subconscious says, yeah, yeah. she's finally got out the she's way. Free. <laughs> we're free you know <laughs> now we can get on with the really good stuff yeah and it, you know it's really amazing even just in the little 10 minute meditation sometimes either during the meditation or afterwards all of a sudden you just have this mega idea yeah. or you sit down at your desk and you're just in the flow you know you're in the zone and you can really you can really um yeah. give full vent to your creativity and it makes you feel more confident. So yeah. that is such a lovely positive cycle to get into. Yeah, I, 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 I'm assuming, um, you know, we're, we're, I don't think some of my clients have um, obviously um, used some of the tools, but I, I deal with people with innovations. And sometimes they often just come at that, you know, that eureka moment. And it's probably because their, their mind's turned off from, from work, from their family and all that kind of stuff. And and it's just kind of popped in at that time to have that creative idea. Yeah, would you would you agree? Perhaps. Yeah, yeah. indeed, indeed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. excellent. Um, uh -huh. um, what, do you have any more um, tools to help us, uh, Norma? Um, yeah. Yeah, there's there's a TED talk which I absolutely love, right. and Pascal and I have, have used this on a number of occasions from a lovely lady called Amy Cuddy, who is a behavioural psychologist at. Harvard University and she's the one that they always bring on when the presidential debates are on to say you know he rubbed his ear or scratched his nose and it means xyz yeah. um, she has a theory about um, faking it until you become it because none of these are going to work unless we actually put the work in and putting the work in means you've got to get out there and you've got to do it with a positive mindset that makes you feel positive, but you've got to get out there and you've got to do it and you've got to practice and you've got to learn and bring in new information. But if you want to get over that initial hurdle and you just feel you can't do it, 
Amy Curry has a theory which she's proven with scientific research that if you change the way that you stand, i.e. if you adopt a power pose, within two minutes, that power pose starts to create positive chemicals in your bloodstream. Mm. Yeah. And it can give you an immediate lift. And this is the same whether you're looking at, you know, people in any country of the, of the world, even happens in the animal kingdom. If you throw your head back, you put your arms out, you're in a power stance or you do your Usain Bolt or your Wonder Woman or whatever, a minimum of two minutes doing that will just give you a buzz and perk you up. So you could try doing that at your desk before you... Uh, sit down and start creating that fabulous content, um, th that helps as well. So TED Talk, Amy Cuddy, and there's some books and things to read that she's produced, which are amazing as well. Really interesting. I have seen some articles by her that are really interested in it. I, I think it's the same lady who, um, even your speech, how you say things and using positive words, I'm sure that's the same lady. Yeah. Um, you never say but, I think that was something, you never say but. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. how you say and um, because it's a negative word. So it's really interesting what you were saying. Um, yeah, excellent, excellent. Have you any more tools for us or any more help? Um, the uh, the three tools that I'd like to remind you about, yeah. and if anybody would like a bit more information on them, yeah. then please um, just send me a, you know, tweet me and I'll make sure I get back to you with the various tools. Uh, one is about the heart centered meditation and taking that headspace thing a bit further. The other is the change tool which is how you use that to reframe your thinking and get into a positive vein. And the third one is what I call the stop it tool, right. which might sound very easy, um, but it can be used for absolutely anything. If you catch yourself thinking that thought or you catch yourself um, in a negative frame of mind, etc., you just say stop it. And I don't know if sometimes if you're working in an office and there are two or three people there, you can go into unconscious mode and start spouting the same negative things that you would normally bring. They can turn around as long as you agree to do this together and actually just say, do you know what? Stop it. And it just reminds you for a period of time how you're getting into that negative mind chatter. So those tools can be really useful as well. Excellent. Excellent. And so if we want them tools, we can just uh, send a tweet to you. Um, yeah. yeah, send a tweet. Brilliant. Yeah. And uh, I'll, I'll make sure that I uh, make them available to you. Excellent. Thank you, Norma. Well, thanks very much. And, yeah. and it's you know, really listening to you made me realise, um, and, and the point I'm going to make as we open the Q&A to uh, we've got, we've, you have two people who stayed all the way, by the way, Norma, mm -hmm. Mario and Mr. Wonderful. So <laughs> this guy's already positive just in name, let alone in, in, in activities. But uh, as we open up to the Q&A and invite Mario and Mr. Wonderful to either type their questions or, or jump into the seat, it makes me think that, you know, listening to you, Norma, that employers have a respons responsibility to their, to their, to their staff, really in terms of creating the right environment for creativity. Forgive me, you can't be the MD kind of put, put pressure on your staff to market your business more successfully if you don't put things in place for them to be able to do so. What, what, what do you make of that? Yeah, no, and, and you know, you, you're so right because if, if your um, staff, if your employees are not in that creative state of mind, if they're in that survival state of mind, then you're just not going to get, you know, the, 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 the right kind of work from them. You're not going to be working efficiently. You're not going to be working um, creatively. So it's something that we're starting to do now with the companies that we're working with here in, 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 in the Northeast and beyond is um, workshops and mentoring sessions and coaching sessions with people just to take them through this to start creating new habits. And it, it makes such a huge difference. Across Excellent. The whole spectrum. So. No, no, and, and I think that, um, you know, that, that's what we need to think about. And even, you know, if you're just a team leader or 
Uh, and if you work within a group situation, you, you have to take some ownership in creating the right conditions. As in other, instead of what I see my clients do, demanding X number of blog posts per week and demanding a video content and so on, you know, you need to kind of think about it. So, so Mario's agreed to to jump in to come and and ask you some questions, Norma, if you're happy with that. So, Mario, if you'd like to just click click on the uh, on the on the, the open seat and I'll let you in. Just waiting, could be some delays. Oh, here we go. Thank you very much. So we've got, we've got Mario Leone. Hi. Hi. How are you guys? Hi. How, how is Hi. everyone? Yeah, fine. Thank, thank, thank you. Good, good. good. Yeah, no, I was listening and enjoying everything that was, you know, being talked about and being said. Um, I, you know, Norma, I, <clears throat> I want to you know, thank you for bringing up a lot of the topics that you've been bringing up because I think a lot of people are just unaware of their thought patterns and how it, you know, plays out not only in their life, but in business as well. Um, you know, I can definitely be that first person to tell you that, uh, you know, when, when things get really down and people get really depressed, they're fighting their own thoughts. They're not fighting anything else. Yeah, you know, they are literally fighting their own thoughts. And with that being said, it did know thyself is the path to mastery because without that, you are just nothing but a reactionary being to the rest to the rest of the reality. Yeah, well, you just react exactly. to the word. You know, reacting to the world as opposed to putting your foot in it and taking a hold of it. Um, you know, living by circumstances and pushing and and doing things like that as opposed to taking charge and ownership of your life. So yeah, yeah, I totally understand. So I just want to say hi. Um, you. I'm in the gold business. And wow. as uh, because of Brexit recently, the gold prices have risen uh, more so than, than, than the pound as well as other things. And I, I think where my business happens to be quite difficult is the caliber of clients. I deal with gold bullion. So just imagine one bar of gold about this long, uh, which comes out to about, about 43,000 American dollars, one bar. Mm -hmm. So my difficulty is finding clients that are not only willing to invest, but possibly because it's these bars are available for investment, but they're also available for trading. So if someone were to trade on the stock market and they wish to trade, these bars are available for trade. Mm -hmm. So, and it's through the London Bullion Market Association, LBMA in London. So, uh, you know, I do have a lot of friends overseas. Now I have three more. <laughs> <laughs> so that's always good. Uh, so my problem is never making the content because I'm a marketing Swiss Army knife. My problem is in finding the target, <laughs> getting to the target. And on Twitter, it's really hard to find somebody who can, who, who has, I want to invest $3,000, $300,000 plastered all over their profile. It's, you know, it's a very difficult market. Um, it is, there isn't a search for that somewhere. You know, <laughs> yeah. a... <laughs> Although I've searched Twitter high and low for, let's say, hedge funds, you know, investing gold, yeah, investing yeah, precious yeah. metals, and so and so forth. So, in in terms of creating materials, I don't have an issue with creating materials. Sure. I can do I can do that my you know very well, yeah. um, you know. But it's targeting that has always been has always been my issue. So I'm working on it. It's in the process, as we say. <laughs> it is, and I suspect you know you'll be spending time, you know, a lot of time on the behavior and looking at you know how do they consume content, where do they go, and all that kind of stuff. And I'd imagine your clients will want to re re remain quite discreet. Would that be fair to say? That would be very fair to say. They want to remain very discreet. A lot of them do. Uh, a lot of the overseas investors, as well as the investors in the United States, they want to remain very discreet. And that's why it's hard to niche that. It's hard to connect with someone who wants to be discreet. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I'm actually thinking of going offline for the reasoning of going, going to like a financial convention of sorts yeah. and being in person because 
um, it's white noise here if, if, in terms of finding that, you know, that one investor that's out there. I believe it's out there. And I believe it's got my name on it. And I believe it's out there for, just for me. <laughs> I, I always, my running sure. joke is I don't need an attractive woman and a puppy to sell gold. I don't. It sells itself. The thing is, is getting people to invest in it within large numbers is a different scenario. Do you know, Mario, I don't know whether you are uh, open to this, but, um, you know, as Pascal was saying, if you really become clear about the target clients that you're going for and you understand where they are and what kind of content they're consuming, the other thing I would recommend that you do, because I've seen it work time and time and time again, both in my own life, but also with clients that I work with, mm -hmm. do your meditation, set your intention and just imagine you've bagged that amazing client <laughs> yeah yeah, and you, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm open to it i'm open like to leon it. you've got the champagne in your hand you can yeah. taste it as you're drinking it and 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 just focus on that and set your intentions because i tell you what fifth dimensional creation is a heck of a lot easier than third dimensional creation i would also would imagine it would do quite a bit for the will because it's usually our will that for, falls short and it's our words and our visualization that impact the willpower you know that that's just you know you can't have one without the other as they say right so I totally understand. Yeah. Um, my my yeah. thing is just getting, you know, putting that time together and doing it, which I can do and I'm open to it. I just got to shove myself to do it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, listening to what you were saying, Mario, you know, I've got a lot of clients who have kind of reversed trends and have gone, you know, offline quite a bit um, because, you know, the, the goal really is all about trust, as you will know, and and, and that reputation. And they found that, you know, the online online platform, they were trying to look, were being sabotaged by less less um, honest and ethical businesses. So they said, well, I don't want to actually be part of that. So they went online. And, uh, you know, that reminds me that uh, you will be aware of the um, Content Marketing Institute, no doubt. And uh, every year they do a big survey around, you know, what is the most effective way to reach an audience and create trust and credibility. Correct. And for the last three years that I've been paying attention, in-person events is still number one. Ahead of, you know, everything else that we can talk about. And, and I think now that, you know, there's such a, uh, an abundance of information online, um, mm. our target audience is probably looking elsewhere for somewhere quieter, as Norma would say. So I would be really keen for you to explore the offline world or go back to it, you know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I can use the online world to maybe hunt down an offline forum of sorts where people maybe mm. meet together or create, or create my own for that matter. Um, you know, just so I could meet with the like like minded individuals, right? I mean, that's the bottom line is being connected to like minded individuals in that same realm that people that have the same kind of taste. I have been looking at it in the sense of not just closing a deal. I want people to be genuinely interested for their own wealth and for their own. I'm doing a service here. You know, I want to make sure that it is going to change what they do. You know, it's not about me and just closing a deal and I'm just going to pick up and run. No, I want it to have an impact on the client that it's a decision that they, they're they going to love making. And not only going to love making, but they're going to make, you know, some money off of it, and, you know, maybe even some wealth off of it. So, you know, I want to help others is what I'm saying. My intention sure. is genuinely yeah. to help others. It's yeah. not, to, I don't want to pick up and run, you know, like some people will say, just close the deal and take it. You know, I don't want to do that. I want to provide a service that pe the people who are interested in into it will will come on board and just explore it. You know, explore it. If they don't want to do it, that's okay. If they do want to do it, that's great. Mm -hmm. Either way, um, just so I can help those people. A lot of people put their money in gold for one good reason. This is one of the reasons why. Just just recently with the whole Brexit thing, not to bring that up, but. When, when the pound was going down, people got incredibly scared. So the first thing they do is hedge their income with gold. It's the first right. thing they do. So it's no wonder why the gold has, ro has rose yeah. as high as yeah. it did. So because it's a long-term store of value since 1971, you know, the, the numbers and the charts have, it shows that gold has held its love <laughs> over time, you know, talking 43 years, 
it, and and it's still going up and up and up and up and it's still doing quite well. All those silvers on the rise today, but um, it, it's it is a nice industry to be in. I never thought I'd turn out to be a gold geek, you know, mm -hmm. learning everything about the properties of it and and the um, science behind it as well. And understanding mining and the different things of metallurgy. It's a very exciting uh, field to be in. But I think getting offline would be a good thing. But if you have any tips on the online, mm -hmm. let me know. <laughs> no, absolutely. So, so um, whilst, you know, we'll, we'll invite all those to let us know if they want to jump in the room. But just for a few more minutes with Mario, mm -hmm. what are you doing currently online that, that is working well? I mean, or are you planning to do more this year? Well, I'm planning to do more. I'm considering doing um, advertising through LinkedIn, although I do, quite, I do quite well on LinkedIn. I have a lot of connections on LinkedIn. I want to make sure that I – it's nice because LinkedIn's system really does allow you to niche down those people. But it can, it can grow to be an expensive form of marketing. As, as you may know, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm going to start off small. I'm going to start off a little small with that. But I love the way they can really niche down the country. They can niche down particular groups. Like there's gold bullion groups of people, you know, just these little groups online they want. They have an interest in it. So uh, using LinkedIn, is it seems like a great tool for that sort of thing. So, yeah. Absolutely. The, the online version of um, content marketing is – very much probably cutted in, in you having a regular series of information to release. So, you know, they, being that you have a series of, of articles or ebooks or videos, it, it doesn't matter. And there mm -hmm. is, as you well know, an education journey almost. So, part of what you want to do is almost have a different work stream. You have a work stream for complete beginners in the world of gold and investment. Right, and then you need to have a work stream for savvy investors because if you try and mix them up, people don't like it so much. Um, so beginners feel a bit lost or not particularly well catered for, and savvy investors think this is too low key for me. Um, this guy is not as good as you think he is. So you've got to really make clear on your platform, whether it's a website or a blog, or whatever. So you, so you said you are, savvy investors, and what was the other one? I'm writing oh, this down. Uh, forgive me, beginners or you know people would be new to um, investing in gold. I got gotcha. you. Got to I really gotcha. separate those two work streams mm -hmm. through, you know, branding or naming or labeling, and and you kind of say, you know, listen, I'm the gold geek, you know, that means where your your words, and I am able to uh, kind of adapt my knowledge to where you are in your journey as a, as an investor, but you've really made that separation. Wow! So savvy investors and then beginners. Yeah, and the line. I would definitely separate them. You could go as far as separate in terms of the social networks you use. So you go savvy investors, LinkedIn, beginners, forgive me, Twitter or Facebook or whichever platform. And then even on your website, you know, there's some clear uh, divides in terms of the naming or the menu options. Yeah, absolutely. Mario, the other thing I would recommend you do is that you really, really create content that shows that you care about your contacts. You know, so you, you start tapping into that feeling thing yeah. and, and, and create content and, and, and share it, you know, share tips and tricks and some giveaways and, and just be generous and just be caring in your approach. Because particularly in your field, mm. in, in terms of, you know, investment, et cetera, it's actually having someone, having a, a great guy there who you know is going to look out for you, who's going to watch your back, who's going to get you a good deal. Um, so I think, you know, it's about positioning yourself as the go-to expert, but also about positioning yourself as someone who's just fabulous to do business with, who really cares about me and puts me, the customer, first. Yeah, that's a good feeling. That's a very good feeling. Yeah. yeah. And that, and that's the kind of approach I definitely want to take. You know, I, yeah. it's, you know, when you're helping somebody invest quite a bit of money, you want to have trust, but you also want to make sure that it's the right decision for them. So yeah. I have been connecting lately. Uh, I connected to an intern, a financial intern. So that might, that might help me. And if he helps me and he does well, I'd be happy to, you know, pay him handsomely, of course, uh, in and of that outside of that, I've also to connected to financial planners because their intention is really to help people uh, manage their money and invest their money. So I've been I've been connecting to a lot of who better than that. You know, I figured that out. I was like, financial planners really 
Um, it's just some of the financial planners are tied to particular firms legally don't have that ability to go outside, but some don't. So mm. we'll wait and see. But I'm going to let someone else take the platform just for the sake of sure. being, being fair to everybody else who wants to join. I don't know what time. <laughs> I don't know what kind of time you have, so I have to respect that. So you guys all have a great day. Thank you so Thank much. You. You're very welcome, Mario. Uh, you know, on the last words, I've been doing content. I've been sharing content, but I have not been sharing much of my content. I've been sharing articles and videos of other people, yeah. right? Yeah. I have been doing like infographics of my own that are advertising based that I've been doing in Photoshop myself. But I think I can take it a step further with, with what you've uh, helped me with. So thank you again. Yeah. And you guys enjoy the day. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. 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 So again, thanks again to, for Malia. That was that was a very interesting, you know, case study in itself. You know, yeah. challenges. So anybody else in the room that wants to to join me? And I think we still have Mr. Wonderful and with us. Um, you know, that would be quite interesting. But um, whilst we wait for somebody else to to jump in and ask questions, Norma, I wanted to ask you the, this question, which is around. When did you start to realize that um, this was available to you and, and how, how did you get on with it for the very first time? Um, I, oh gosh, I started on this about um, seven or eight years ago and I actually um, had a bout of food poisoning and fainted in the bathroom and smashed my head up. And I spent about three months recovering from that and stumbled across Dr. Joe Dispenza, um, who's come up with this whole program uh, and, and um, meditation and change program around breaking the habit of being yourself. And not only did that help get me in the right place where I could um, sort of heal my body physically, but gave me time to think and work through a lot of issues and think about, you know, all the things that I'd done wrong and, and how I'd like to improve in the future. So it was just a great time to, to start doing it. And in a sense, I look back now and think, wow, you know, when, okay, I mean, the, the pain and, 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 and problems from the accident weren't great, but when would you have the pleasure of having three months out to really just sort of regroup and refocus and, and, and start planning how you'd like to change things for the better in, in the future. So it was it was just a really nice, uh, a really nice thing to be able to tap into. OK, thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Could I ask a quick question, Norma? In terms of um, you're saying, you know, you, you, we're talking about content creating creation and uh, getting in the right mindset, as it were. Yeah. Um, how long, you know, using some of your techniques and things, how long does that take? And I mean, I know everyone would be different, but how long would that take? In terms of feeling more confident? Yeah, yeah. How? Uh, I mean, does, in terms of using your tools, do you think you would pick it up straight away or, or does it take time? That would be my question. I think if you do, if you commit to... A week or two of doing yeah. the meditation yeah. and you might need to just create some new habits and put little sticky labels up yeah like this yeah, kind yeah, of thing yeah. little yeah. sticky labels up to remind you i think within a week to two weeks right you start feeling a difference i'd be surprised if you didn't start feeling a difference within so a couple of quick. days yeah but you know it's got to be consistent yeah. and you have to keep at it and yeah. and just do it because it's not about willpower, it's not about positive self-talk, it's not about anything else, it's about changing those habits. Yeah. And it can be really quick. And do you know, the lovely thing is, once you get that tickle in your stomach, once you feel that buzz, once you got in that creative yeah. groove, and that whole content creation process is flowing better, yeah. you're hooked. Yeah. You're hooked. You know it works, therefore you're going to do more of it. It yeah. doesn't take long. You've seen the scans of the brain. Yeah. That was after a couple of days. Oh, all right. Excellent. Well, thank so you it can be really quick. The more you yeah. do it, the more effective it is. Yeah. Do you know, I've been to a whole raft of different companies. One company in particular, they're really very serious, sort of task focused engineers, et cetera. And I've been working with a couple of the guys there who you would never think would contemplate sitting down and, you know, thinking about 
meditation and change and stop it techniques and this that and the other but they were having to knuckle down sort out their website they were having to start thinking about content creation and getting into this whole field of work that was totally alien to them and they were absolutely yeah. panic stricken yeah. yeah. everything yeah and the breathing techniques and the meditation and just changing that language in their own heads it, within a week they yeah. were bouncing off the Brilliant. walls and feeling better about it so it can be really quick all right excellent that's great thank you okay thank you very much well listen unless we have any questions from from the audience i think we're going to wrap up episode one yeah. the um, launch episode so you know i want to thank norma for helping us obviously kicks down the series of the content marketing studio and how to get ready for for marketing i want to thank mario for popping in yeah and uh you know i have to say that's the first um gold trader that i've ever had on the call or, or anything like this so it's good to have him we had mr wonderful and, and and a few others as well i came in tiana as well and i want to thank people who have been promoting the show as well uh, online but um you know that's it for us that was the content marketing studio and thank you very much for your support Thank you. Thank you.